Hey YouTube, Teach Man to Fish Channel here. Another thrift store score. This is a set of interesting cast iron. One's a pan, one's a sad iron heater. Uh, I'll explain what that is in just a second. Also could be used as a diffuser. This is pretty cool stuff that we found here. What you can see here was purchased in a Goodwill thrift store for $12.25. Was in, I wouldn't even say it was in rough shape, but I did do a re-season on it. I didn't put it in the electrolysis tank. Uh, didn't have much rust, little bit of rust on the back. But as you can see here, cleaned up nicely in the uh, seasoning process. So I'm happy with that. It's a uh, round griddle, a number eight, unmarked, uh, probably pre-1960, no made in the USA on it, but who knows exactly when it was made. But it's, it's not a recent make and I haven't been able to figure out who the maker of this was yet, being an unmarked. Um, it's got one little eye symbol on it right there. But what's more interesting to me is what this came with. So, as you can see in the photograph, when I bought that at Goodwill, these two were taped together and underneath it was this. So this, I had no idea what it was. And I'm gonna try and do uh, just the quick research that I've done. I'm gonna try and do justice on what exactly this is. It is a sad iron heater. So back in the day when you heated with uh, kerosene or oil or turn of the century, all the, the houses had the oil heaters in it. This would sit on top of the heater collect heat rising from the bottom up this would surface would then become hot and you could set your solid iron old school if you think back to turn of the century or old school heaters would then sit on top of this The other thing that I'd like to point out with this is, I'll, I'll switch to a picture here in just a second, but you can see this date says, patented June 27th, and I believe, now that this is cleaned up, but initially I thought that said 1877, but I believe what it says right there is 1911. So, this was patented in 1911, and if you were using a wood cook stove, this could also sit on your wood cook stove. And as your cook stove was, or coal, was sucking in air, it would feed through these holes. This could still pick up heat, but allowed air to suck in through the cook stove. So I just so happened to have a cook stove top that I use on my Lodge Sportsman's Grill. Another video on that if you're curious how a cook stove fits on a modern grill. But I'll pull that out here in just a second and you can see how this would fit. So now that I have the cook stove out, you can see how this would have actually fit on and worked back in the day. This would be your oven top. And inside here would be the firebox. When you pull off the ceiling or cooking plate, inside here would be the fire heating up the plate, but you would replace it with this. Now it's not a perfect fit. This was probably made to fit a specific stove or a specific size of stove or size opening. Um, and who knows, maybe that's what Maybe that's what that number 23 means. I, I don't know exactly. Um, but anyhow, 
So this would sit on top, and as this got hotter and hotter, you would bring your iron in and set it in. This, I've got a uh, interesting specification or sales book description on this. Uh, it was made by Perfection Stove. Uh, this was called the Perfection New Iron Heater. Uh, you could put, I want to say it said three on there, but I'll, I'll post in just a second. You'll be able to see specifically. heat multiple irons on this surface this is very flat very smooth and iron your clothes with it from there so that's how it would, it would work on an old wood stove now here's another interesting use for this put our wood stove top back together they also call it a diffuser so if you have a thin wall, and this is why I believe this was sold together or it arrived together at the Goodwill thrift store, if you flip this surface over, this then becomes a heating surface. And if you've got a thin walled pan, you place this on top and it diffuses the heat across, kind of becomes an intermediary between the heat source and the thin pan and spreads the heat across the whole cooking surface. So I'm gonna be trying to use this. I'm gonna be making a uh, hotel omelet station style cook, and I'm gonna see how that does, because one of the problems with doing those cooks is you get hot spots on the pans. This should, as a diffuser, solve that hot spot problem. Something else to make note on this, and I looked at some of these on eBay, and these are going, looks to me like around $50, $60, but I don't think I'd ever sell this one. I'll just keep it as, as a diffuser plate, but I think you can make it out in the video. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. There's a pretty healthy crack and warp across this. It won't affect at all what I want to do with it. You can see, yeah, there you go. So that crack runs full depth. Uh, doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm not using a glass cooktop, so that sits perfectly fine for me. That pot sits on top of it. We'll see how it does. So that's it. That's my latest thrift store score. Uh, I'm getting deeper and deeper into this cast iron collecting. I hope you enjoyed the rudimentary. I'm, I'm no expert at this. And if you do have more information on this skillet, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I, I love the sense of the history that comes along with these pots and pans. And I'm enjoying the learning process. So thank you for watching the video. If you'd enjoyed it, please click like and subscribe. And comment down below if you've got some more history to add to this uh, little pair that I have here. Thanks for watching. So that's it, my latest thrift store. The, uh, the fire would be underneath here, heating up in. Nah. Babble, babble.